Hello guys and welcome to my new video and today we'll be looking at some of the latest changes that happened to healers and Blizzard has made these changes in the pre-patch but anything that happens in the pre-patch is also gonna trickle down to the main client or Shadowlands beta so I think it's safe to say to some extent that anytime Blizzard wants to make any impactful changes they might go into the pre-patch but they're really thinking about the beta itself so let's go and have a look at some of the changes to healers and there's been quite a few Quite a few impactful changes that you might be very interested in. If you look at the Druid section, you'll see that Feral's got a really warranted buff and restoration damage of all abilities reduced by 5%. Now, it's looking like the buff to the Feral abilities might not affect the rest though. So that's something that we're going to test out because the beta has not received these changes yet, soon. But why are they nerfing Restal Druid damage by 5%? So Restal Druids historically have been a very, very strong Mythic Plus healer. And they're looking to be very strong Mythic Plus healers in Shadowlands. In terms of the way that they deal damage, there are very few healers in the game that can really maintain or do a whole lot of DPS with a single global cooldown. And in my eyes, that's going to be Restal Druid with Sunfire. That's going to affect multiple targets around it. Again, you don't have the Azerite trait that increases the radius like you had in beta, but... Or in pre-patch, but again... Sunfire is very, very powerful, and Holy Paladins also have things like Consecrate, which is, again, one global cooldown does a whole lot of damage. And Blizzard is looking at Resto Druids, and they're like, hey, Resto Druids have a whole lot of utility. You have things like Battle Race, you have Typhoon, if you spec into Balance Affinity, you have Orsog Vortex, a really short defensive on a tank. You have really good dispels, if you really consider it. Certain healers can only dispel the one type of debuff. <clears throat> Resto Shamans. Technically speaking, the damage that Resto Druids are doing right now is very powerful because of Heart of the Wild and Convoke the Spirit combo. If Convoke the Spirit from Night Phase is not going to be the main thing, if it's going to get nerfed, this might be heavily impacted. A lot of people will look at Heart of the Wild and like, hey, this is a 5 minute cooldown. If you combine Heart of the Wild, again, a lot of people are running Boomkin Affinity and people need to realize the reason Balance Affinity is so powerful is because being melee in Shadowlands is a lot more annoying than it is in BFA. There's a lot of affixes like Storming, there's a lot of affixes like Spiteful that just make staying in melee like a really nuisance. So Balance Affinity has been pretty much a go-to for a lot of Rest of Druids because of convenience. But if you combine Heart of the Wild, 5 Minute Cooldown and you Convoke the Spirit and if you stay, you have to remember, Convoke the Spirit is going to use abilities based on your current form. So if you stay in Balance Affinity, you're going to be doing a lot of... You, you're going to be using Starfall. You don't have Starfall as a Resto Druid, but because you use Convoke the Spirit, you will cast Starfall. So, for example, I'm also using Trinkets. Again, unused Trinkets can be really crazy. I'm using an unused Trinket that's going to give you 1200 versatility. So, for example, you might do a certain combo where you're going to try and go into a certain Eclipse. In this example, I'm just going to use Starfire to go into a Solar Eclipse. After that, I'm going to maybe, I don't know, apply my Moonfire, Sunfire use Heart of the Wild, and then use Convoke the Spirit, which is going to activate my Trinket as well, and you can see Starfall going off, and this is going to be a whole lot of damage. And this is the type of thing that Blizzard might be looking at, and hey, look at the Druids and Rest of Druids using this kind of combo with Heart of the Wild and Convoke the Spirit and Balance Affinity, maybe combined with a certain Trinket proc in order to do a ton of damage both in single target and AoE, based on which Eclipse you might go into, Solar or Lunar. So, I can see why Blizzard is doing this, but I'm not sure if this is the right way to nerf Druid viability in Mythic Plus. I feel the core problem of why Druids are so strong is to do with the amount of abilities that just work in Mythic Plus. But again, let me know how I feel about the Druid damage nerf. Let's move on to the next healer. Now, this is going to be very, very interesting because we're going to be looking at Paladin. So the general consensus on this one is Crusader Strike mana cost reduced to 9% base mana was 14%. This is something that I think a lot of Holy Paladins who were running the melee build were asking for, especially in pre-patch, because a lot of the players in pre-patch were playing the Glimmer of Light melee build. In Shadowlands itself, Holy Paladins in raids, there is a chance, you, oh, there's a very high chance you might be running a range build, which I'll talk about later on, but this is a big, big change because, again, I know a lot of Paladins who were in melee, Crusader Strike, you could just deal damage and you could run out of mana, which felt really weird when compared to other healers, which could do a lot of DPS and they wouldn't even feel a dent in their mana pool. But they also have nerfed Shield of Righteous damage by 15%, which is kind of big. 
Because Shield of Righteous is one of the go-to abilities for Holy Paladin when you have three Holy Power and you're like, there's not, nothing to heal, what am I going to use it on? You go into the D melee and you use Shield of Righteous and it deals a substantial amount of damage and it's something that's making Holy Paladin to be one of the top DPS healers because Holy Paladin has so many DPS toolkits in terms of Shield of Righteous, in terms of Consecration, in terms of the fact that they can apply Holy Shock offensively and True Glimmer, this allows for a really nice passive healing that also deals a lot of damage and the Blizzard is trying to tackle that with Shield of Righteous damage reduction which is a bit weird in my opinion but again you also have to look at the Holy Paladin buffs here. And this is Holy Shock, increased by 10%, which is, again, very nice. The fact that they're buffing Holy Shock could also mean that Covenants that affect Holy Shock, like Divine Toll from Kyrian, are also gaining in power. And again, Kyrian is looking like the go-to Covenant for Holy Paladins at this given point. You also have World of Glory healing increased by 9%, which again is going to be a nice boost to single target healing Holy Paladin in Mythic Plus environments, because you'll be using a lot of World of Glory as a Holy Paladin in dungeons. In raids, you're probably still going to be using Light of Dawn, at least we'll have to see how the scaling is going to happen. Light of Dawn had a buff about a week ago as well, so they have also nerfed Glimmer. Glimmer talent has been reduced by 10%. So why are they doing this? To Holy Paladins. Blizzard is trying to take away a certain amount of power from Glimmer of Light talent and they're allocating it to your base toolkits in terms of Holy Shock buffs and World of Glory buffs. And this to some extent makes sense because Glimmer of Light has been becoming a default choice in Shadowlands for a lot of Holy Paladins because if you're, if you're not sure about the raid boss patterns or anything like that, you will go with Glimmer because it's going to give you a, a decent amount of healing no matter what. If you need damage, and again this is the only talent in tier 50 that actually gives you damage if you're doing Mythic Plus, you want to provide more DPS, Glimmer of Light is going to allow for that. So generally speaking, Glimmer is becoming the default choice. I think Blizzard doesn't like that. I think Blizzard wants you to think in terms of like, hey, maybe Beacon of Fate is going to be a good option if there's going to be two targets consistently taking damage. Now, Beacon of Fate can actually be a bit of a trick talent because you have to read it. Your heals will now heal both of your beacons, but at 30% reduced effectiveness. So if there's only one target that's actually taking damage, this might actually be quite bad to pick so you need to know if beacon of fate is going to be worth it if there's going to be again is there going to be a lot of overhealing and things like that and at the same time beacon of virtue which provides you with aoe burst healing again you need to be able to use it properly maybe on things like bursting timing timing it properly during bursting stacks and things like that can be very beneficial but at the same time you have to know how to use this, while Glimmer of Light just ends up being a very good default choice. And I think Blizzard is nerfing that because they want you, as a Holy Paladin, to think which talents you're going to use. But I think it's relatively nice to see that Blizzard is trying to reduce the mana cost of Crusader Strike because, like I mentioned, there has been a lot of talk about the range build appearing in Shadowlands beta in raid situations where you're running this conduit that Holy Light heals up to five targets within eight yards, and this conduit has been buffed like a couple of weeks ago as well. And double down with double infusion proc legendary the range built in raids is actually looking to be like the go-to at least at this given point and blizzard trying to buff the melee build a bit with crusader strike mana reduction which was one of the main reasons or it was one of the big reasons why you couldn't really just stay in melee and use crusader strike in raids because the mana cost was so big it's nice to see that blizzard is trying to balance them out but i'm still not sure what blizzard is trying to do in terms of promoting a certain gameplay in raid environments do they want range and melee build to coexist do they want you to go into melee use a couple of crusader strikes and then go out and start casting holy light when you're running out of mana because crusader strike cost is relatively expensive but now they reduce Crusader Strike mana cost, so maybe that's going to have a bit of a shift. Again, guys, I really want to hear your opinions about Paladins because they've been an ongoing discussion in terms of what is the gameplay in raids. Again, in Mythic Plus, I do feel it's always going to be melee Crusader Strike type of gameplay because you want to make use of your DPS abilities during your downtime. So let's look at the priest changes and discipline has received a certain amount of nerfs. Power Ward Shield absorb reduced by 8%, Shadow Roll Pain damage reduced by 10%, Purge the Wicked which is a talent that replaces Shadow Roll Pain damage reduced by 10% as well. Generally speaking, any nerfs happening to dot abilities for priests or discipline priests in general are going to be more impactful in Mythic Plus because you have more targets to dot up. This might not be that big of a deal in raid situations. It's something that I expected, honestly. 
priest or discipline priest has been emerging as one of those healers that's great in raids and great in mythic plus and becoming like a choice for people who are looking for a healer that's going to give you a good overall experience paladin used to be like that in 8.3 with glimmer where paladin was one of the top raid healers actually probably the best raid healer in bfa 8.3 and one of the top mythic plus healers and discipline priest was kind of doing the same thing in shadowlands and i think blizzard is really scared about a certain healer being great for every content right now if you pick any healer most of them are going to have certain strengths and certain weaknesses they might be great in raid situations but they might not be that great in mythic plus and vice versa type of deal so i can see where they're going with this but again let me know how i feel about the priest nerfs and now let's go to shamans and resto shaman or actually generally all the shaman specs chain heal reduced by seven percent the other change to restoration is to do with leveling which is not really that impactful if you have a max level character so let's go on and look at resto shaman shaman has probably been one of the top hyped up healers for shadowlands because of the utility they provide and also because of their hps has been pretty good both in mythic plus and raid situations shaman will probably be considered as a better raid healer than it is in mythic plus but i still think shaman is very fun and very good healer for mythic plus and i think the difference between the worst healer and the best healer in dungeon environment is not that big why are the nerfing chain heal i'm not 100 sure if that was the right way to go because i don't think chain heal has received a lot of nerfs in shadowlands and all of a sudden this chain heal nerf is going to be a direct nerf to high tide which already is not looking that great because it's been nerfed a lot the talent itself and true chain heal nerfing as well so i guess blizzard is doing the same kind of deal where they want you and i think this is a good thing if you're doing even mythic plus or raid content i feel in mythic plus ascendance is probably going to be the go-to choice but in raid situations if you're doing a certain boss you might be like hey having a three minute cooldown because there is damage every three minutes with ascendance might be the way to go or wellsprings might actually be easier because people are a little bit spread out and if i can actually position myself correctly so again i think blizzard is trying to make row 50 a more interesting role especially in raid situations because in mythic plus i do feel that ascendance is going to be the way to go because again with pridefall having a three minute cooldown a strong three minute cooldown is very very is very very good at the same time, Chain Heal nerfs are also probably going to indirectly nerf the Chains of Devastation Legendary, which has been, I've been using it a lot. I think it's really fun because with Chains of Devastation, you're basically casting Chain Lightning or Chain Heal. Again, remember, a lot of people think that using this Legendary, it means you're only casting Chain Heal and Chain Lightning, which is not true because you have a buff for 20 seconds or so. So you don't have to cast Chain Heal, Chain Lightning. You can do a lot of things in between. I still feel this legend is going to be the go-to choice for rest of shamans and mythic plus maybe up to a certain point where you're going to do really high keys and you need a bit more healing but i'm liking this legendary i'm not happy with the chain heal nerf uh, but i guess blizzard is again scared about shamans being too powerful or too hyped up guys let me know how you feel about these healer nerfs let me know which healer you're going to be maining which healer is the most interesting for you and let me know if you enjoyed this video and if you do like and subscribe it helps me to keep turning these videos out every week every day every time there is certain changes thank you guys and i'll see you in my next guide